Good morning and welcome back to Biofarm America 2016 in Boston, day two. And I'm pleased to have with me at this point um, the president and CEO of Cura Oncology in Edison, New Jersey, Troy Wilson. And Troy is going to speak to us about his company's approach to precision medicine in cancer and its lead candidate, which is in four phase two studies. So let me start by just saying what I pulled down from your website, which is that your company's focus is on cancer genetics and translating novel science into life-saving precision medicine. So can you, can you give us kind of the thumb, thumbnail of, of, of the company strategy? Sure. So our strategy is to take small molecule drug candidates that target either proteins or pathways important in cancer mm -hmm. and then use diagnostics to find the right patient populations. All three of our programs are targeted therapies. Uh, Tipifarnib, which is the most advanced program, is one that is, as you mentioned, in three phase two trials with a fourth one due to start. Okay. And then the ERK inhibitor, which is coming next, will have an IND on file here toward the end of the year. And the goal is really to take these very highly potent compounds and find the right disease setting in cancer where they're going to work the best for patients. Okay. So you mentioned diagnostics. Is, is that part of what Cura brings to the table or will a partner bring that to the table? So there's, there's really three parts to that, Joe. Okay. The first is what's the, what's the marker that you're using, right? Is it a mutation, an amplification, a protein on the cell surface? And for each of our programs, that's a different, a different answer, a different technology. The second is how do you do that in a drug development? Uh, drug development uh, paradigm. Mm -hmm. So we're working with our clinical sites. For example, in our HRAS trial, each of the clinical sites uses its own proprietary technology to screen the patients initially. We then confirm that. Once we make the decision and pivot to a registrational trial, we will develop the appropriate uh, diagnostic assay that has to go hand in hand with the therapeutic. And again, that you know, we'll know what that is at the time that we pivot and move move toward a registrational strategy. It may be different if we're talking about. HRAS mutant solid tumors than if we're talking about peripheral T-cell lymphoma. But we're trying to make it as simple to use and as straightforward as possible. Okay. So Tipifarnib, lead candidate, it's a farnesyl transferase inhibitor, and I believe it has something of a past history before Cura started working on it. Tell me about the history of that drug. Sure. So Tipifarnib, as you mentioned, is a member of a class of inhibitors called farnesyl transferase inhibitors. There were a number of large companies in the late 90s and early 2000s that worked on these, on these compounds. And for the most part, they, none of them had success. Um, we resurrected this compound through an, ex, you know, we have a very deep relationship with the management team at Johnson & Johnson, and they saw an opportunity to license the drug to us because um, the opportunity with Tipifarnib is, is this is really an asset that sort of came around ahead of its time. It was, it's a targeted therapy that was developed 10 or 15 years ago in an era before we knew how to develop targeted therapies. Ah. So the struggle that they had was, you know, you wouldn't think to develop a targeted therapy in an all-comers population. But now that, now that we've seen EGFR inhibitors, ALK inhibitors, BRAF inhibitors, we can take the same approach with Tipifarnib. And that's exactly, exactly what we're doing. We are taking this very potent farnesyl transferase inhibitor, a much better understanding of both cancer biology and immunology, which we think it plays a role in both, and then the appropriate diagnostic to look to enrich its activity in particular patient populations. And we're doing four yeah. very disciplined phase two trials to get to that goal. So what are the um, settings, the cancer settings for those four trials, the three ongoing and the one that's about to get initiated, right? Sure. So in the four trials, the first is, a, is an HRAS mutant solid tumors. Mm -hmm. We just announced some sort of top line data from that trial right. uh, about a month ago, seeing some very encouraging activity in HRAS mutant head and neck cancer. Right. That trial continues. Right. We have trials ongoing in peripheral T-cell lymphoma and lower risk myelodysplastic syndrome. We will start a trial shortly in chronic myelomonocytic leukemia, but importantly, now in all four of those phase twos, we have previous clinical data where we know the drug is active. We know it's active, we know it's safe and well tolerated. The question is, you know, how can you take a drug that works and make it work better? Mm -hmm. so, so this 
uh, molecule applies to both solid tumors and hematologic malignancies. Is, is that kind of unusual? It's very unusual. And, and part of uh, the reason that it works is it's not like an inhibitor, a direct inhibitor of an oncogene. So we think of EGFR inhibitors or ALK inhibitors where it acts on the disease-causing protein directly. That's not what tipifarnib does. What tipifarnib does is it interferes with the ability of a number of different proteins mm -hmm. to get from point A to point B in the cell. And when you can block, you sort of, if you can imagine you're know, shutting down the subway system in the, in the cell, mm -hmm. what you can do is you can then block the tumor cell's activity because it's relying on those proteins to get around on subway cars. And we've essentially flipped the switch and turned off the subway. Okay. And you're working on uh, getting ready an IND with an, an ERK inhibitor. What's an ERK inhibitor? And um, tell, tell us more about that. Right. So uh, one of the central pathways in cancer is a pathway called the MAP kinase pathway for mitogen-activated protein kinase. Mm -hmm. There are four major components, RAS, RAF, MEK, and ERK. Okay. There are now marketed drugs against RAF and MEK, multiple yes. marketed drugs. Right. RAS is still a big bear of a protein, has been challenging to drug, and ERK is an obvious target. We know that if we, we know that if we can interfere with RAS or ERK, we're likely to have an effect on tumor cells. So ERK sits at the bottom of the pathway. It aggregates all the information that's coming through that pathway. We have a very potent inhibitor of the protein, and we're, we've, we've done extensive preclinical work to understand where and how to use it, and now we're really looking forward to moving it into the clinic uh, in the early part of next year. I see. So I understand here at the conference this year you're scheduled to be on a panel later today. Um, what can you tell us about that? But also what are Cura's goals? Um, who are you meeting with here at Biopharm America? Are you looking for partners? Um, you're a public company. I don't imagine you're looking for financing here. What, what can you tell us about the conference from sure. Cura's perspective? Yeah, so this is a good conference in that you know there are um, large pharma, small biotech companies, diagnostic companies. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of investors as well. I'm actually participating on a panel on serial entrepreneurs along with Mike Gilman and Tillman Gerngross. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm really looking forward to that. We have a number of meetings with business development and um, even though we're a public company you know you're always looking to expand your network you're always sure. looking to maintain relationships this is a great opportunity to do that okay well I hope the conference continues to go well it was good catching up with you and we'll look forward to following the Cura oncology story in the Informa Pharma Intelligence publications thank you again my pleasure and thank we'll you. be back with more interviews from Biopharma America 2016 thanks